say is that time of year when the days are starting to get longer and the temperature is starting to improve to a point where we're keeping a very close eye on the weather to check our last frost date so that we can plant all those wonderful seedlings that we've been growing over the last few weeks and months out of our greenhouses and polytunnels and into an outside space. And as we're now right at the beginning of May, I'm going to take you on a tour around my allotment and show you some of the things I've done over the last couple of weeks and some of the things that I'll be doing during the month of May, just to give you one or two ideas and tips what you might do in your vegetable garden. So let's pop off to the allotment and I'll show you around. So I'm just standing in the left hand corner of my plot and this is where we're going to start. And I just want to just pan around the whole vegetable plot just so you can see what's going on. So the allotment's looking really good, very pleased with its condition at the moment, but there's still, as always, plenty of work to do. So let's start in this corner here. Here we've got my herbs. So I've got some lemon balm, which is starting to grow really nicely, some chives. There's a sage plant there, which has survived all over the winter. Didn't expect that to survive, but it did. And there is my rosemary always does well if you haven't grown rosemary and you want a really good sturdy herb to start with go and get rosemary it's a fantastic herb to grow and it's wonderful with all type of uh, meat dishes it's a perennial so you put it in and all you need to do is just cut it back really. there's nothing to do to it in a poly house which we're going to have a look at in a minute i have got other herbs such as coriander and basil and dill so we'll see those in a moment now this morning i've planted out the first lot of my french beans these are variety called Blue Lake, and these are a climbing variety, which is why I've got them with the metal fence. I have put a bit of a cover over some of them just to give them a bit of protection from birds until they establish. Let me come over to this little bed here, and there's some spring onions that are in there, which I should be able to harvest very soon. They're a variety called Ramrod. Here are my broad beans. These were an overwintering variety called Valenciana. And they're looking particularly healthy. I've not grown these before, but they look really good condition. And as you can see, they've already got flowers on them, which is where the broad beans will start to be produced. So I've just moved to the other side of the broad beans and you can see that I have two lots of onions in here, quite a lot. These are grown from seed. These first variety, the ones nearest the broad beans are a variety called Kelsey. And the variety nearest these leeks is a variety called Buckinghamshire Champion and they're looking fine for where they should be uh, at the moment. I'll give them plenty of water because we haven't had a lot of rain recently uh, and that will help them to get to where they need to be for harvesting later in the year. If we move over to just over to the side of the onions, I have four lots of peas. These are a variety called Calverdon Wonder and today planted a whole row of Calverdon Wonder all the way along straight into the ground. Now I believe that the risk of frost is minimal and the temperature is going to be warm enough to help them to germinate. This is the spinach which grew last year and has survived all over the winter. Last week I cut it back because it was producing some seed heads. Now when a vegetable starts to go to seed it's starting to realise that it's coming to the end of its life and then its natural reaction is to produce seeds and that means it will flower and die off and that's where you'll get the seeds. But what I've tried to do is just cut the seed heads off just to see if it will grow and it seems to be producing quite a lot of spinach again which I'm really pleased about. Now just beyond that, today and this morning from the poly house I've planted out this one courgette plant. Now anybody that's grown courgettes will know that courgettes are pretty prolific in relation to what they produce so I've, this year I've decided to grow one now and I've planted another couple of seeds a few days ago to try and produce three or four plants. In the past I've had six, seven, eight of these plants and two things. One is that they take up an awful lot of space and second they produce so many courgettes it's very difficult to use them all. So I've got one in there and that should start giving me courgettes in around about three to four weeks. And then by the time that starts to come to its end, I'll have the other ones ready to plant out from the poly house. You can see the ground that I've dug there, absolutely fantastic. But that courgette is a variety called Astra F1. Just beyond the courgette, I have my lettuce, which I planted out a few days ago. There's a few varieties here. The first two rows nearest to the path, they are a variety called Lola Rossa. As well as being beautifully tasting, I like growing Lola Rossa because they're quite decorative as well. And rather than just get the standard green, which you can see to the left on the other varieties, it produces quite a nice colour contrast and makes the vegetable plot really attractive. And the three further varieties of lettuce, just to the left of the Lola Rossa, there's a variety called Lakeland, then there's Winter Gem and Little Gem. 
The ones at the end, they're just taking a little while to adjust, need a bit of water, but they'll be absolutely fine. One thing that always amazes me about lettuce is that some veg need a lot of protection from birds and insects and slugs and all those types of things. But uh, lettuce seems to be less affected on my vegetable plot in that way. Is that the same for you actually? Let me know. It'd be really interesting to know if that happens to you. So if you could pop a comment below and just let me know if your lettuce get attacked or are they also the same as mine and they're okay where you are. The beetroot are two varieties, uh, one called Pablo and the other one called Montana. And the beetroot were grown in the poly house and transplanted out, out of pods just a few days ago. Beetroot will take a few days to adjust. So when you do plant beetroot out, don't be alarmed if they appear to be sagging or a bit limp. Just give them plenty of water. If it rains, obviously that's fine and they'll soon recover. Now this is the next job, which is the strawberries. And as you can see, there are quite a lot of flowers on them, which means I'm not too far away from being ready to produce the uh, strawberry fruits. So what I need to do is tidy the beds up. I'm gonna weed around, clear the path in the middle, and the ones nearest to the camera here, these will be dug up because these are the ones that are over three years old and they will produce strawberries this year, but they'll be tiny. So that ground will be dug once they're dug up. And what I, what I will do is when I dig the runners up from these plants here, I will plant them into here. And they will produce a few strawberries this year, but mainly next year. So as we move across from the strawberries in the next bed, I've got garlic nearest to the camera. There's about six rows of garlic in there. And I'm really pleased with these this year. These are sole and white. They need to have a bit of a water. If you have garlic and you're growing garlic and you have long periods of dry weather, don't forget to give them water. I have read some people that say they don't need much water, which is very true, near, much nearer when they're going to be harvested. But at the moment, they do need some water. And beyond the garlic, I have onion sets, two varieties. The first variety next to the garlic is Red Baron. And the variety beyond those is century. Another job I have to do is just to weed this bed. It's not too bad and it won't take me very long. I just need to get it done. And just at the end of this bed, I have some shallots and some more beetroot. Now I try and utilize the space as best as I can on the vegetable plot. So where the gaps are between the shallots is where the shallots didn't take. So I've just put a few beetroot in there to uh, make up the space. Now with brassicas, it's really important you protect them and that's why they're netted because everything tends to like brassicas and they will be attacked. That'll include things like butterflies, birds and all types of other insects. I use this scaffold netting, which is really good. It's very fine, it allows the air, the light and the water to get through, but will keep most insects out. There is a video on my channel showing you which is the most appropriate netting to use and when, so check that out. Under here, nearest to the camera, we have kale, which is a variety called dwarf green curled, which I grew last year. So I've got five or six plants of that. Next to those, I have Brussels sprouts, which is a variety called Brendan F1. And beyond that, there's a couple of varieties of cabbage uh, called Golden Acre and Cabis, which is at the far end, which produces a really lovely hearted cabbage. So clearly they're not going to be ready for a while. So I'll keep an eye on those, water them and get in there occasionally to do a bit of weeding. So as we move from the brassicas, we'll come into the poly house in just a moment, but just to the side of those are my potatoes. Uh, I put those in about three weeks ago. They're not showing yet, which is absolutely fine. They do need a bit of water. As I said, it's been very dry here over the last few weeks. In there, I have a variety called Desiree and also Maris Piper. So there's five rows of those. And just to the right of them, you can just see that pile of grass, which we're just going to now. That is my first attempt at no dig potatoes. There is a video on my channel showing you how I've done that, how I planted them. They're not showing just yet either, and I think they need a little bit of water as well, but we'll see how they go. They're a first early variety called Swift. And because they were no dig, I put a little bit of newspaper down, a very small layer of my own homemade compost, and then put the potatoes on top and then covered them with grass clippings. And I'll continue to add grass clippings to those as I cut my grass. And then we have the rhubarb here. This is the soft fruit area. Rhubarb, absolutely brilliant. Already had a pick of rhubarb and produced some wonderful rhubarb, orange and ginger crumbles. And you can see how healthy those are. If you watch this channel on a regular basis, you will know that I always recommend with rhubarb that when you water, you water right down into the plants, not on the leaves. So take your top off your watering can and get right down there because rhubarb do like plenty of water. 
a lot of people always comment and are very complimentary about my rhubarb and say that my rhubarb doesn't grow like that. And when I talk to them, a lot of the time is they don't water them regular enough. I'll even water these sometimes after it's rained. If it's very light rain, I'll still get in there with my watering can and give it more water down to its uh, roots. Two blueberry plants just here. These were transplanted out of the poly house last year because they didn't do very well in there. And beyond there are my raspberries and they're starting to green up nicely. And now they're starting to produce new plants on the ground as well. So they'll start to shoot up when the weather gets a bit warmer and when we get a bit more rain. And again, a bit more weeding to do in there. So outside, as you can see, lots going on, lots planted, but still plenty to do. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to go inside the poly house and have a look to see what's going on and what will be coming out shortly. Now this is my poly house and this is something that has made such a difference this year. This was built last year. There's a video on my channel showing you how I built this poly house, but I really believe I've made the most of it now since I've had it for this year. And you'll see why when I go inside. Straight away you can see that there's plants just on the raised beds here and you can see all the plants growing which I'm going to go through to show you what they all are. There's even plants growing underneath. Absolutely fabulous space, it's made a massive difference. So let's start off as we go in. Now this year I've been growing flowers a lot for the very first time. Now the flowers to the left are petunias and they're, they're almost ready to go out. In fact a lot of these are going to be going out over the next few days into my garden, my daughter's garden and giving them to people who want them. And here there's a tray of Mesa fimbrianthium. You'll see some more of those on the shelves as well. So these are going to produce a fantastic display in my garden. Now there are plenty of other flowers which I'll show you in a moment. I'll go around in a clockwise direction. Next to those there are spinach. Those nice green leaves. And then look at all the lettuce behind that. Wow. We've been picking lettuce now for two weeks already and we're only at the beginning of May. And you've seen the ones outside that will be behind these when once these are finished. The variety that I really like are this variety here and they're a variety called Lakeland. Uh, because they're just so beautiful and crunchy. They're almost like an iceberg lettuce, but not with the heart. So the leaves are really, really crunchy. But having said that though, these are winter density, these ones here. And there are some little gems in there as well. So I do grow quite a few varieties of, of lettuce. Just beyond that, you'll see the grow bags. And this morning I put my first lot of tomatoes into the grow bags. The two to the far right hand side are a variety called marmonade which are an outdoor bush variety and then i've got four plants there of moneymaker also here you'll notice with all the flowers i've been growing i've made up seven hanging baskets and i'll give them about a week or maybe two so they get a little bit bigger and then they'll go outside once they start to flower beyond there is more lettuce just at the back and some of you may recognise the celery, which is also in there. Now this was grown outdoors last year and didn't do very well. It did fantastic in here. And when I was digging the ground outside, I noticed that there was some still growth on the celery at a very low level. So I dug them up and I planted them in here. And as you can see, they're growing really well. That should give me a nice early harvest of celery. Now here we come on to the shelves of what I've been growing and this is stuff that will eventually go outside. So right at the front here, we have cucumbers. And they're looking particularly healthy. Now these are outdoor ridge cucumbers, a variety called Market Moor 76, one that I've grown for years. And they produce a really good crop of cucumbers every single year. I train these up canes, so these will be planted out, I'm guessing in the next two weeks, looking at the size of them. And just behind them are peppers. These are a variety called Gusto F1, a very hot pepper, and they're looking great as well. They'll really start to accelerate when the temperature starts to increase. I'm going to put them in larger pots. And at the front here, another variety of pepper called Carolina Reaper. These are a lot slower, and these do need high temperatures, so, uh, but they're still looking healthy for what they are. And behind those, the rest of my tomatoes. All those are marmonade tomatoes, and they are outdoor tomatoes, so they'll be ready to go out in the next week or two. And just to the side here of the tomatoes, we have dill at the back, then coriander, then parsley, and then basil. Right at the back there, I have sunflowers. 
these are very large giant sunflowers one of them hasn't germinated but four out of five isn't too bad uh, i'm experimenting in a green tray with parsnips they've not germinated just yet and today i planted two trays of sweet corn and in the pots at the front here i plant, again planted today uh, some more courgettes and next to those are a few trays of calvert and wonder peas i think i've got a bit of a rogue plant in there i'm not too sure that looks like a cucumber or squash and that was probably in the compost when I put it in from a previous pot. So next to those we have at the back celeriac, which I transplanted a few days ago, and celery, again, which I also planted a few days ago. So that's going to give me quite a lot of celery. They look pretty small at the moment, but they do grow quite quickly. Celery likes lots of water. So I keep an eye on those pods to make sure that they're always well watered. And two trays of Swedes at the front. This is that fantastic variety I grew last year called Helena. So there, there's 18 Swedes in there and they're going well as well. And next to them we'll come to my flowers. At the back I have a tray of Calendula. And just in front of those, uh, something called Catanache, which are a beautiful uh, flower. These ones are a light purple uh, flower, so they'll be really nice. And then I've got a couple of trays at the front of coleus. At the back I have a couple of trays of African marigolds. African marigolds are the more rounded type of flower compared to the French marigolds, which are a little bit smaller and flatter. Then I have two trays of agaritum. And just in front there, I have the next lot of lettuce. Lettuce grows so quickly. These were only planted from seed about three weeks ago. And in this environment, you can see how fast they've grown. They'll need to be pricked out into individual trays. Then I have another load of Mesothimbrianthium. At, and at the front, some Elysium here. And the four trays at the back are also Elysium, which are a low growing, uh, spreading plant. Uh, this one's called White Carpet which will give me a nice um, colour variation compared to the other flowers that I'm growing. And then I have four trays of lobelia. They're purple lobelia, so they'll go nicely in my flower beds. And then cosmos. They're growing really well. There's two different sowings here, which is why you've got the difference in size. You've got some quite tall ones at the back and a little bit smaller at the front. That's because the ones at the front went in about three weeks later than the original ones. And here, starting to grow at the front on night scented stock and then the rest of the uh, plants in here um, some flowers at the back nicolatia and then we have nigella which haven't germinated yet another tray of cosmos just here and then we have my leeks which i've transplanted last week and another larger tray of leeks there autumn mammoth leeks a few other trays of flowers um, at the back that haven't germinated yet larkspur and another tray of petunia which i've put in and at the front we have four dahlias and they're a dwarf mix of dahlia and then two trays of french beans which i literally planted this morning so as you can see in the poly house there's loads of flowers and vegetables that are almost ready to go out in some cases some will need to be in a little bit longer and as you can see there's lots of lettuce and spinach and we've got hanging baskets and more flowers it really is a fabulous time of year in the vegetable garden and also if you are a flower grower like myself uh, it's fantastic to grow the amount of varieties that you want and need. So as you can see plenty going on at the beginning of May in my vegetable plot. Lots of things that I've already planted out and things that I will be planting out over the next few weeks. It'd be really interesting to find out what you're growing. You know, are there things that you're planting outside that I maybe haven't? Maybe there's things you might not be planting out until later. If you could pop a comment below and let me know what you're doing, that'd be absolutely fantastic. I really hope the video has given you one or two ideas and maybe a few suggestions for what you might think about doing for yourself. And if you did like this video, don't forget to give it the thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to the channel for future videos on how to sow and grow fruit and veg, and one or two recipe ideas, then don't forget to press the subscribe button. And I'll see you all on the next video.